How do you think Jason Peters has been, not just physically, but also as a mentor for uh, so many guys in the offensive line, especially like Lane Johnson under Tackle? He's always been that way from the day I met him. He's, uh, he's a coach on the field. He's got great instincts. I mean, he could tell, he could tell me right now what you're thinking. That's how, that's how, that's how like before, uh, before some defender makes some type of move on him, he already kind of knows. It's weird. I can't even teach that. I don't, I don't know how to teach that. It's like, and so uh, he, he's he's been great. I, I like the development. I like the way that I like the you know he's he's even working on all the little technique work. I went out there early with him last night. We did some footwork stuff and some you know hand placement and all that. And he just he's another one totally believes in what we're doing and, and helps you know with the younger players. You know I saw him over there with Jordan. After each series, even during the series, I heard him yelling out there to Jordan. As soon as he identified something that he wasn't doing properly or something, I heard him, Jordan, you know, give him a little code word, and then Jordan's like, I got it, you know. So, what, what about what about him coming back the way he is at his age, playing as well as you know, I guess from what we've seen so far this off season and yeah. everything. You know, what, what, what can you say about that, you know, with Jason? I, he's amazing. I don't know how many other people in the world could recover like him and be able to do this for this long with some of the injuries that he's had. I just don't, you know, I don't know how to explain it, but I'm so happy he's back and, and uh, doing some really good things. You know? in, he didn't play last night. I mean, was that part of the plan? Were you concerned at all? Anything there? Say that again? I mean, he didn't, he didn't play last night. He was dressed and didn't play. No, a, no, we can. Was see, here's the, the thing. Plan? Here's the thing. A guy that's that, I, mean, I don't know how many plays he's played in his lifetime, how many games he's played in his lifetime. Right out here, we can control what's going on. We, when that's going on in there, I really, well, we need him to be practicing. We need him to be getting his footwork back. We need him to be getting his hand placement and all that stuff back. And I know what he's, I know what his ability is in the game. I know that. And so we have, we have, we have as good a rushers as anybody in this league. And Derek Barnett to me is a different player right now. And when, and so when you see him battling with Derek every day, and you're like, wow, I mean, that's as good as you know. He's a really good player to me, really good rusher. And so uh, to me, that's that's what I need to say. So in this in the spring, you were uh, talking about how when you won the Super Bowl, it's kind of, you thought about your family and all the moves you had to make and kind of the uh, coaching life. How tough has that had that kind of been for them? Was there one move in particular that kind of stood out, or you know, just kind of that coaching life? Style? I think the the toughest move was uh, probably not 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 from a. When we came here, I had moved my daughter three times in high school. And so um, I said, look, I said, honey, wherever you want to live, whatever school you want to go to, that's where we'll live. It's on you. And she smiled, and I said, so I, she went to visit some New Jersey high schools, and, and uh, I thought we were going to end up in Haddonfield. And then uh, I called a friend of mine who was the high school coach at Strathaven. I said, look, my daughter's going to come in here tomorrow, like at 9 o'clock, Coach Clancy. And I said, I, I really appreciate it if you kind of greet her at the door. And he had like 30 students there. Maddie, hey, you know, so I get home that night and she says, Dad, we're living in media. I said, what do you mean? She said, oh, I love that high school. So that's where we live. I still live in Haddonfield. That's a solid choice. I lived there six months also. I lived in Haddonfield for six months, and I loved it there. But she, it was her call, and uh, we're happy, very happy where we are. And and uh, the kids are like, you know, I don't think my kids would have it any other way. They've learned so much from moving, um, uh, having a, to learn how to make friends, uh, having to, uh, I mean, they would tell you they wouldn't do it any other way. Because we've had this conversation. What what did they uh, after the Super Bowl win when you saw them and they see kind of Dad reach his uh, pinnacle of his profession? What, what was that moment like? What did they kind of say to you at that time? They were as, they were as excited and happy as I was. They were. I mean, they were running across. The, I was looking for him and I saw my son running. He left my wife and my daughter. They were behind, but he was sprinting and 
he just launched himself on top of me, and, and uh, then we all got together, and it was emotional. It was so to be part of two national championships and then to win a Super Bowl like that as a family, it's pretty neat. Your recall from having been in all these different places, the players were saying you can, you know, you'll see a blitz or a scheme, and you'll point out the year and the game. Uh, have you always had that? Where does where does that come from? Do they kind of rib you about that a little bit in the meeting room? Yeah, they, yeah. I I don't know what it is. I just I could uh, tell you who the player was, what high school he went to, what the play name was. We, sometimes we'll sometimes I have to pull out some archive film from Michigan State in 2000 because we haven't run that play in a while or we haven't run it at all but I have that play on film and I have the teaching points on it so I have all that archive film and sometimes I pull it pull it up and then they all go whoa what you and then they start asking questions but but I do have the ability to do that I could forget your name in about two seconds but I remember stuff like that <laughs> So Stephen was just he's a guy who never played on a winning team until last season. His role has shifted uh, in center and guard. What have you seen from him, and uh, is it different now that he has a really stable role in the this season? Uh, can you repeat the question again? Yeah, just, just it, is it different for Wisniewski yeah. now having a, a stable, uh, established role going into this season? I guess for him it is. I, I, I've always saw value in, in uh, Wiz. Um, I think that, um, you know, we had this whole controversy thing going into last year we were moving guys around we we're trying to find the right mix and the right production and he, it just ended up and I tell the players none of you guys are my brother-in-law nobody's my cousin there's no like this is about what's best for the team so whatever decisions that we make it's what's best for the team and uh, he just he just brought a lot of value to the position very intelligent. He's a center. He's another center on the field, basically, and um, he's got some thickness to him and some power to him. And so those interior players, man, they have to be able to. That's why Brooks is so special. Brooks is. Brooks is. Uh, he's at the top of the top in this league at that position, because nobody can push him back and, and, and push the pocket. If you have to run the ball and he's a backside blocker, he can displace. He brings a lot of value, and, and Wiz has some of that too. So, and what kind of stuff have you seen from Brandon Brooks? Uh, you know, uh, Brandon is a, a very uh, critical person of himself. Um, he's always asking me. Uh, sometimes, you know, I hate to admit this. I feel like I'm in confession right now, but sometimes uh, you so you get so involved. I guess because of my college background. You get so involved with trying to develop the young players at a very fast rate that sometimes you overlook the older guys because you feel like they know. And sometimes, like Brooks will say to me, he said to me the other day, he says, Coach, where do you feel my hands are? And I thought about it. I'm like, you know, you are kind of right. I said, and then I told him, I said, I, I apologize. I, I, I'm sorry. I'll, I'll keep a closer eye. I said, I. And that's what happens sometimes. You have 15 guys, you're trying to, especially the younger guys, you're trying to get them this so they can have a chance to make the team. And you feel like the older guys kind of already know what you're speaking of. And, but you got to keep an eye on them too. And you have to coach them too. You bring up a good point, an interesting point, self-criticism. Who, who is your biggest self-critic on this team? Who, who looks at themselves? And maybe they all do to some extent. Kelsey's hard on himself. Um, they all they all take accountability on that part. Every one of them. The older guys. Brandon had said a couple of years ago when he was going through the anxiety issues. He said not everybody was kind of there for him, but pointed at you specifically and said you you told him all you care about it, him as a person, and he said now he'll you know, do anything for you. Uh, what was you know what what was kind of that period like? For That's him? just what you try to do for him. I don't do anything for him. I just saw a guy who was uh, uh, in a situation and and it was bad. It wasn't good, and I could see that. And I just put my hands on him and I said, "Bro, right now all I all I care about, all we care about, is that you get better. So forget about football right now. Let's just, you know, we're talking about you and your life and and." and you know, that's all. I mean, you'd have done the same thing. Anybody, that, I, I, I don't know. I just, I just spoke from my heart, and uh, I guess that meant a lot to him.
in Mike Rose's case, oh, you that's, that's were with him at a different stage of his career. How have you seen him develop as a coach, change as a coach from the time he worked together at Alabama to now he's an offensive coordinator? Um, I don't know. Mike's been a great coach as long as I've known him. And we had a great run at Alabama together, and he walks in here last year, and our receivers play the best they've played since I've, I've been around here. Um, so it's no wonder. I mean, I knew that, and I'm very happy for him and, and, and the position that he has, and I'm right there working. I'll do anything for Mike Rowe. With Mike coming to the coordinator and all the other changes on the offensive and coaching staff, how do you think uh, you guys have done as a team with all the changes? You know, that was the one part that uh, Coach Peterson had, had spoke to me, you know, a little bit about this whole thing, and I said, you know, we, we had, last year we had our coaching staff, the, un, the unity that we had and the ability to speak openly to each other and not be afraid of um, speaking what our ideas and thoughts were with Frank and Flip. Um, that's the way it was. And so to go through some drastic changes, um, I don't think would have been the right thing, personally. Um, I think that Coach did the right thing, and I think that that lessened the amount of or, or that much change. And I, I think that we're pretty much the same as we were last year. A lot of the people were here last year. They went through the battles we went through. They went through the meetings, the conversations, the arguments. So everybody kind of knew what, to, what, what it's all about. And I think that we've, we've just, we're back on the same track. And now going back to Brandon Brooks, I know you talked about how much Jason Peters has been a positive influence on some of the other guys. I've seen Brooks working with uh, Matt Pryor on after practice. Uh, how much has he been a leader for some of the other guys? You're very observant. He's different this year when it comes to that. He is definitely, that's, that's, that's definitely a fact. Brandon Brooks is, now, now that he's established himself as, I think, the best in the business at what he does, at his position, but now I think he's always looking, Brooks is a really smart guy now, he's always looking for a new challenge, he's always looking for something that he can do to make himself even better, and I think he's taking that that role on this year more than ever. Hey, Jeff, uh, everybody talks about Jordan's transition, obviously, which is huge, but Taylor Hart's also came up as a defensive lineman. Now he's been on the offensive side a while. How far has he come in that, that time? Uh, far. You know, he was going through the same thing basically that Jordan went through, although he's played football before. Uh, he's been in meetings before. He knows uh, the expectations. Um, I think that the change to offense is, I mean, let's face it, on defense, you're running full speed that way to try to get to the quarterback. On offensive line, you're kicking backwards uh, to try to prevent that from happening. So that's a whole different world. And to get the timing down, and at what point are you going to brace and use your hands? At what point are you going to run the guy up the field? What, like, when is he going to go under me? I mean, all these things to be able to assess on the run, that takes some time. And I think that Taylor Hart's done a nice job of, of developing in that area. And you can see that on the field. Like, last year, he was, his, his set lines were way off. Uh, his timing was off. But he's much better now than he was. And now you spoke about the coaching changes, um, and, and they changed your role. Do you ever get aspirations of leaving a bigger role, calling plays somewhere, and potential head coach like you were the interim head coach with Miami um, that year? Yeah, I, you know what happened to me? Um, um, I love coaching the offensive line. That's my passion. And, you know, my son graduated from college a year ago, and he came to me and he said, Dad, I'm really confused. I don't know. And he doesn't really do that. He he knows it all. So he does, it's really first time. And he said, I really don't know what to do. Should I go to law school? Should I, should I, uh, you know, what should I? I don't, I don't. I'm confused. I said, I, son, I can't tell you what to do, and I won't tell you what to do. But I'll give you one piece of advice that that, that I know is true. You have to do what you are passionate about and you love to do, because you got to do it every day. I love coaching the offensive line. Now. When I got placed into the head coach role, did I enjoy that? Absolutely. It got me a chance to get to know all the players in the team. It got me, you know, so it was different for me. Okay. Um, I have called plays before. I've been an offensive coordinator. Do I not? 
do I not? Would I be happy not coaching the position? No. This is what you want to do. I, I love being right there, helping develop the players. Um, I, I, I do. And when did you have that that realization, for lack of a better word, that this is the job for you? I, I just think that when I when I got flipped over from defense, because I coached defense before I came over to offense, I really, I really, really enjoyed uh, the offensive line, and it just became passionate for me. And, and from that point on, I just, but like I said, I, when I got put into that role as the head coach at Miami, I had never done that before. So for me, it was like I said about Brooks, who's always looking for a new challenge. That was really awesome for me. And I, I was kind of coaching. I was kind of moving around, and I was so that part of it was was pretty pretty cool.